channel this is nurse tisa and today we're going to just jump on in we're going to be talking about covid 19 plus anxiety um the last week that i made a video i said i was going to be trying to you know make a video at least once a week however i had a real real bad week last week so therefore i didn't make any content i didn't record anything didn't do anything with my my business nor did I do anything with TikTok so it just the COVID testing is like driving me insane so it has pushed my anxiety level through the roof but I decided today I was going to come on and talk about it um, most people that works for assisted living facilities long-term care rehab facilities are required mandated by CMS to be tested for the COVID-19 every two weeks. However, my company that I work for, we test every week. Um, Florida mandated that they send supplies out and text every two weeks for all the licensed personnel, everybody that works in there, if they're not licensed, housekeeping, maintenance, everyone get tested every two weeks through the state program. And then we have a contracted um, lab that does ours, so we get tested every week. But on July 16th or 17th, the CDC changed the recommendations surrounding testing for the COVID-19. Prior to that, what they were saying, um, we had to test every two weeks and if you tested positive whether it was resident or staff you'll be quarantined for 14 days then you had to retest and if you still was positive you still quarantine you still can't come back to work you couldn't come back into general populations for as the residents and for as the staff the staff couldn't come back to work unless they had a negative test and sometimes the staff tested positive for about six weeks. So those guidelines had gotten changed on July 17th with the CDC. So the new guidelines and regulations is, if you test positive for the COVID-19 and you don't show any signs and symptoms for 10 days, because you're gonna be isolated for 10 days. You're gonna, if you're a resident, you're gonna be put in a COVID unit. If you're a staff, you're gonna be quarantined from the building and quarantine home for 10 days on the 11th day if you um don't have any signs and symptoms if you're a staff member you can come back to work if you're a resident and you don't have any signs and symptoms we can put you back in general population with the rest of the residents that changing of the testing freaked everybody in, in health care out freaked us out we all freaked out because we were so used to testing 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 until we find that they're negative and then we can say they're clear to go you know we're trying to protect other residents and we're trying to protect other staffs and staff and residents and this new guidelines through us you know we wasn't expecting that so that was one of the things that had changed um the next thing that changed was a lot of people a lot of the staff that i work with all tested negative but they had some type of signs and symptoms you know in the beginning they was asking about cough temperature um headaches um any of those respiratory issues then they added on different things like no taste no smell nausea and vomiting diarrhea so then the signs and symptoms went broader you know went went out so we had a lot of staff members that test negative but had those signs and symptoms. So now you're getting the clinical team together to make a decision. Do we let them work or do we send them home for 10 days? Um, and, and you know, you can't send them home for 10 days if they test negative because people need to work. People need to work and we need staff to take care of our residents. So that was... Uh, very emotional it's very nerve-wracking especially in my position because yes us clinicals we got to make that decision so we you know risk that chance of saying okay maybe it's something that they ate or maybe it because you know the regular flu and the regular cold did not go anywhere it is still here so you got to be the one trying to decide is it just a regular cold or is a 
you know, regular flu, you know, what is it? So it's very hard, very stressful and very hard. We're coming up on our flu season and we all know sometimes when we get the flu shot, some people do develop the flu. Um, so now we got to real, you know, really look into is it flu or is it COVID-19? And we all know that most cases when they are bad, bad COVID-19, they develop pneumonia and that's the worst of it. They develop the pneumonia, the lungs fill up with fluids and we're trying to, you know, get that fluid out of them. So that is the, you know, the main thing that scares us all. And for me, on top of that, that makes my anxiety go through the roof is, you know, I know a couple friends that have passed away from the COVID and this one particular person that was a classmate of mine, he happened to be incarcerated and he passed away for, you know, with the COVID-19. He had other comorbidities. I think he was a diabetic or something like that. However, it's very hard and very stressful for me because the end of these inmates do not go anywhere. I, I know they're in prison, but in my mind, I consider them to be in a gated community. And when I say they're in a gated community, it's because they cannot go to Walmart. They cannot go to different stores. They can't go places and catch this virus. They're going to catch this virus from somebody bringing it in. And whether it's um, a delivery truck to deliver their linen, a deputy, uh, people that are able to go different places, they're going to bring it in. Because since March 4th, I want to say that the Department of... Um, what is it? The prison department of um, law enforcement, they stopped all movement. They had no visitations. Um, nobody was going out to doctor's appointment or anything. Everything, all movement had stopped in March. They haven't been transferring um, inmates from one place to another. And, and it's hard for me because my son is in prison right now. And one of the inmates that passed away was at his camp. They have lost two inmates to the COVID virus um, since I want to say a month ago. So it, it bothers me, you know, we all have loved ones that's locked away and you know, they can't go out to the doctor like we can. And they do have doctors there, they have nurses there, but they have limited medications for these residents. Um, not to mention that I do know some people that have had the COVID-19 was on the respirator, fought it, survived, but now they have long-term effects out there. Um, my one friend that live up north, now, you know, he, he's a diabetic because they had to give him prednisone and now he's gonna mess them up and now he's a diabetic. Um, you know, it's just different long-term effects. I know some some person, one person rather, um, decide have to do dialysis now and it wasn't a dialysis patient before. So COVID-19, it's not just you get over it and that's it. It's some, some side effects that happen to you later on. So COVID-19 equals a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, a lot of isolation. Um, I went and see my grandmother today and I go and see her often as I can, but it's, it's a change in how we visit because I'm not able to hug her all the time. I'm not able, you know, I always got to have a mask on and it's because where I work at, you know, and I too go to the stores. I have to go to Walmart, you know, I have to go to stores. I haven't been to Walmart in I think three weeks, but I had to go today because I needed some stuff to, you know, to get from Walmart. So I just say, we just got to stay positive and you know try to protect ourselves as much as possible you know wear your mask wear them properly and we still see people we still see people out with the mask under their nose or under their chin or some without any mask you know i, I went in walmart today and i saw two people two that did not have masks and i am the one that carries a bunch of masks everywhere i got masks everywhere so you know me i was being nice and say here, I, you know, I got two masks, you know, you want one? And they did take them, but I'm just saying, it's just so scary. And isolation, you know, it's like I'm home by myself. Well, I got my kids. I got King there with me. Uh, one day I'm going to invite him onto my channel. I got my grandson with me. 
and I got my other grandson too. I got two of them that lives with me. My daughter and my son-in-law is there, but I'm still standoffish with them because of where I work and what I do. I still stand off. I'm still like, don't try to be too much on them because of this COVID-19. So this video is titled COVID-19 plus depression is and anxiety is very high right now. But I plan on to get back to my old self and try to start back making some videos and posting them on my YouTube channel. And I'm um, not always, always talking about the COVID-19 because, you know, I don't think it's going anywhere. We just going to have to learn how to live with it and protect ourselves. Um, I think that's about it. That's the only thing I want to cover. But yeah, I know I was a little MIA, but I'm coming back. Okay. Um, I did watch Black is King by Beyonce. I really, really enjoyed it. It's one song in particular that I really, really like. And it's uh, Find My Way Back. And um, I just think we all need to find our way back. You know, the world is crazy out here, but we just need to find our way back. So until next time, be safe. Wash your hand, wear your mask, and, you know, peace.